Um, one very important uh, type of data uh, that is used in Prolog is, is that of list, um, which is very very similar to the one used in, used in Scheme, just that here, because we have um, operators and, and um, um, we have the possibility of writing things in infix, uh, lists can afford a uh, um, more um, uh, a nicer syntax, uh, just like that, right? So if we uh, have a list of three elements, say A, B, C, we would write it like this. Um, the list containing the elements A, B, and C separated by comma in square brackets. This is in fact syntactic sugar for dot, right, used as a functor, right, with arguments A and the list made up of elements B, C, which is also written as a dot first argument b right and the list uh made up of c uh and this would be the empty the empty list uh so this is very similar to what skimmers know as the cons writing of a list cons a cons b cons c and no um right uh and uh, even for that even for this there's an alternative right if we want to emphasize the head and tail of a list we can write the list in square brackets with the head separated from the tail by a vertical bar. The vertical bar uh, will just separate the uh, head and the tail, right? So we can have this writing head bar tail instead of dot h comma l head and uh, and oh, oh sorry this should be tail. Please change. Um, so lists are just regular terms. Uh, but the syntax is sort of consecrated. You can at any point come up and uh, uh, replace the functor for lists with whatever you want. You want a different functor instead of dot, you can build your own lists. However, there's a library of list uh, predicates that um, you would probably find useful, and those predicates accept the uh, consecrated uh, syntax for uh, list. So, uh, um, we can just um, uh, play with lists uh, a little bit. So as I was saying, if I say x equals dot, and notice the spaces, a comma dot, b comma uh, dot, c, and empty list, and period is, right? Uh, um, this is recognized. So what we get from this uh, execution is that this term is recognized, but Prolog prefers to write it like this, which is the standard writing, right? So if I say x equals uh, c, we would get this. Now if I say x equals a bar b c, right, we get again a b c. And uh, the writing uh, head, so a is the head of the list and uh, what is after about is the tail of the list. This writing is much more useful in rules. It's generally not useful in, uh, in playing with um, uh, constant lists. Uh, right? One interesting predicate is the predicate append, the simplest predicate that you can write on uh, lists. So uh, if we say a, b, and I'm going to put here one, two, just to showcase the fact that uh, lists can be heterogeneous. There's no problem there. Right, we're going to get the append. Uh, list becomes the result of appending a, b with one, two. Uh, however, there's because of this search and uh, of a solution and, and backtracking uh, feature, we can write for the same program. Right, append is a pre predefined predicate, but it's one that we could define ourselves. The, uh, it's um, uh, it's a very simple predicate, and if it weren't in the uh, library, we could just define it ourselves very easily. So let's find the list A, B, which appended give us the list 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So when we execute this query, you will notice that the system generates all the possibilities of lists A, B, such that when they are appended, they produce 1, 2, 3, 4. And we get the typical pulse of resulting from uh, an exploration of the uh, solution space um, at the end that yields no solution. Um, okay, so um, uh, there are many.
predicates in the uh, list. Another one that, that we're going to see in the tutorial is reverse. Uh, so we can say 1, 2, 3, L, and we get the list of uh, elements in reverse order. Um, uh, all right. Um, one um, simple Uh, or um, so, so one one simple definition of append uh, we're going to see it here. Um, let's see how we could define our own append and perform a uh, simple demo on the execution of append on how can we get the um, all the all the solutions. So this is the append predicate. We have renamed it into app so that it doesn't conflict with the predefined um, append uh, that will yield an error. Uh, all right, so. Um, uh, but it's it, it has exactly the same uh, meaning, and it's actually the same predicate, right? So this is exactly the definition that you would find in the di in the library. So append, uh, if to the empty list we append uh, some list s, we should get back the list s, right? So empty list plus s should be s. Now, if to this list h t, I append the list s, then what should I get back? Well, I should get back definitely a list that starts with H. So if the first element of the first list is H, the first element of the result should also be H. And the tail of the result should be some list S1. And this is true if, by appending to T the list S, we get back S1. Right? So, so notice the reading. Right? Append HTS is HS1 if append TS is S1. Um, and this is the is this is the um, um, a definition. Let's execute it in the uh, meta interpreter so we can uh, understand how it executes. So if I say app of one, two, three, four, and x. I'm going to get the result. If I say a, b, p, a, b, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to get all the combinations, sorry, of lists which appended together produce the desired result. So if I execute this in meta, Let's try and keep the um, clauses in, right? So we we execute this when renamed. This is the renamed goal, right? And we, have, we don't have any cuts, so the levels are not that important right now. Uh, so the first clause that is selected is this one, right? Right here, but renamed, and we create a unification request. It succeeds. Notice the interesting thing, right? One, two, three will be G774, which is the same as this thing, which will provide value for G649. G649 is in fact B, right? So B is one, two, three. On the other hand, the empty list unifies with G648, which is in fact A. So A will be the empty list. Now, type semicolon. So what we go is we go we go back to the choice point and pick the next clause, which you see here. We get a unification request. We get a unification request plus the body of the selected clause. All right. The unification request succeeds. Right. In the process. In the process. Uh, all right, G791 becomes equal to 1. All right. And 
and G791 is all, also appears here, all right? G791 also appears here, and this is, in fact, the first element of G648, all right? Um, then we have a new goal. This is a new round of performing of picking a clause, right? So we will pick the first clause again, even though at the previous round, right, you see in the stack right now we have 2, 1. At this, the, cho the current choice here is the second clause, whereas the current choice here is the first clause of append. All right, this succeeds. This sets the tail, this guy, is set to the, um, to the empty list which makes uh, this guy be equal to 1, right? So this is 1, and this is the empty list, so th this becomes the list containing 1. And this, in fact, unifies with A. This is the old G48, so it becomes 1. G49, right? G because of this unification re request, G49, so G950 becomes 2, 3. But G950 is also G49, and G49 is in fact, so G49 from here uh, is in fact G774. So G49 is G774 in this unification request. G774. Uh, G, G, sorry, 649 is B, so B is 2, 3. We go further, right? So we go back to the previous trace point, which is, which is level 2, and we pick this one, right? So uh, when we pick this one, right, again, we have unification request. We have a new clause, we have unification request, right? And uh, then we are left with this after the unification request succeeds. And then we have the third round of choice, right? We have, we go to level three. At level three, this is our first choice, right? Which we pick here. We have unification request, success, and this leads to one, two, right? And finally, we go back. And at the third level, we pick the second clause. Right? So when we pick the second clause, we're going to have unification request. This is the remaining goal. Succeeds. We got to level four now, right? This one succeeds and we try to pick again, right? But as we go back, so sorry, at level four, at, at level four, I have forgot to mention, at level four, we pick this clause, right? So again, we do the first round of picking. Then we try the second round of picking. We try try the second round of picking, and the unification request fails, uh, all right? Because we already have this as the empty list, and this is a list that is definitely not empty. A list which inside has a bar is definitely not empty, must have a head, and the tail must have at least one element, right? So definitely this uh, empty list will not be unified with uh, this list made up of at least one head and a tail. So it fails and yields false. Another uh, form of the append predicate, so going back to the predefined one, right, is with only two arguments, but the first argument is a list of lists. And all the li all, all those lists are appended together. So inside this list, I'm going to put list one, two, then a, b, then x, then x, y, and close the list of lists. And the result is expected in L. And we see that we can append more than two lists in one go. Um, Yet another interesting thing is uh, using uh, variables in append. So for instance, if I want to append list A, B, 
with 2, 3 in L. And later I'm going to say that A is uh, 5 and B is 10. Right? We're going to get that L is the list 5, 10, 2, 3. Right? So we can create a list where elements are placeholders. We use unbound variables as elements. The, these uh, elements become placeholders for data that is to be filled in later. Okay, so uh, this is uh, enough about lists, right? We're going to talk about it more in um, um, tutorial and uh, we're going to see many examples in uh, homeworks um, and uh, we can take any discussion offline. Um, if more clarification is required. Now, uh, we can also perform arithmetic, right? So this is one thing that we overlooked. Remember that um, Prolog uh, is, is a tool for ad something else, not for numeric computations, right? So um, arithmetic is not the emphasis. Therefore, doing arithmetic is a bit cumbersome. Uh, and, and we'll see uh, often um, because we cannot change the value of a variable, and because we cannot use an arithmetic expression uh, as argument to a function, um, um, often doing arithmetic is a bit cumbersome. But remember, this is not the main purpose of Prolog. Um, so there we have the predicate is, which is also is a predicate and it is also an operator, right? And you can see it in declared in a list of operators. Um, this only inside this predicate the arithmetic operators have meaning, have the meaning of arithmetic operations. So when we say x is 2 plus 3 times 4, we're going to get the result of um, evaluating the expression according to the standard interpretation of the operators. And uh, obviously, um, it's uh, everything that you need for arithmetic is in there, trigonometric functions, exponentials, and so on, uh, right? Um, but it's only inside is. Uh, remember, arithmetic expressions outside of, of is, they're just a piece of data. Uh, we can even, we can even uh, use a constant here, 5 is 2 plus 3. However, you can't do 5 is x plus 3 and expect x to be found, right? Um, uh, you might expect that because we've seen the, uh, that um, 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 Prolog queries can have sort of an equational um, reading, and we have been able to find um, solutions for similar solutions for lists. For instance, uh, for um, uh, a list, that, let's um, uh, emphasize an even more interesting um, use. For instance, I can say append, and I can say x, 2, 2, 3, uh, 1, x to 3 so then um, it's like performing the subtraction of the 2 3 list from the list 1x to 3 and we're gonna get x equals 1 1 x right so it's like performing from this I subtract this and give me the result but unfortunately this doesn't work here uh, there is an extension of Prolog called CLP, Constraint Logic Programming, which does that. And actually, this Prolog environment, SWI Prolog, has a constraint library where we can use the hash equal sign, right? The hash equal sign um, for um, uh, for this kind of thing, right? We can say five hash equal x plus three after loading the uh, CLP library hash uh, 5 hash equal x plus 3 and it will respond with x equals 2. Um, let's see doing arithmetic let's see factorial right how do we do factorial well we can add we can start with the fact that factorial of 0 is 1 right and factorial of n is x if n is greater than 0 n1 is n minus 1 so notice how we perform arithmetic factorial of n1 you might be tempted to in this position to say n minus 1. That won't work because that would be using an arithmetic expression outside of these predicates. Arithmetic expressions don't have the meaning of arithmetic computations outside of these predicates, right? So this is the only way we can go. n1 is n minus 1 and then n1 is used as an argument, 
you can say n minus 1 here. n returns the result of x1, so factorial of n1 is x1, and then the result x is x1 times n. All right? So uh, this is the only way in which it, it works. Uh, remember, here you cannot use an arithmetic uh, expression. I mean, you can, but it won't be interpreted as the computation of that expression. So factorial of 5 is x. And we have, again, the annoying false. We, the expiration space is not complete. Then we have the annoying false. What will really happen when we press semicolon? Well, guess what? The interpreter is going to attempt 0 greater than 0 and fail. Right, that's what's going to happen. Uh, and this is because, you see, this n is sufficiently general. So whenever this, this uh, rule can be used for a unification request, also this rule can be used as well. Right? So, so if, uni if a unification, succeed, unification request succeeds with this, it will necessarily succeed with this as well because this is more general. These are variables, right? So if so, this will succeed only with something, uh, right, that will have um, uh, factorial 0 and, and something here, right? So this is more general than 0, will definitely succeed, right? Once it, the unification uh, succeeds, we're going to attempt this predicate. This predicate is a uh, um, pretty fine predicate. Uh, right, and it succeeds, it, it will enforce arithmetic evaluation, so I can even write here something like n plus 1 um, if you want. Uh, it will enforce arithmetic evaluation, and it will succeed if the arithmetic evaluation uh, holds and fail otherwise. The problem is that we know in advance that whenever this rule is used, this rule is not necessary, because if this rule succeeds, this, when this rule is used, n will necessarily be 0. There's no other way. And therefore, this will be attempted and will fail, and it will result in an extra exploration of the search space that will fail and result in this result of false. So on one hand, it's annoying to see the false. On the other hand, it's uh, wrong to do a computation that we know it will fail every single time we perform it. How do we get out of this? Well, we use the cut, right? We use the cut right here. So we're going to say, well, every time unification request succeeds with this head, there's no need to use the second rule. So this gets executed, removes the choice point from the stack, and precludes the second rule from being used for n equals 0. Because of this, the test is no longer necessary. All right? We will only use this one when n is greater than 0. There's no way of using it when n is equal to 0. And therefore, the test is no longer necessary. So this is a very useful way of employing the cut. Most of the time, it is like that, right? It is from precluding other, other, other rules that are more general, right? And the only way to specialize them, right, would be, without using a cut, the only way to specialize them would, would be to add a guard. In the previous uh, slide, this is what we call a guard. It specializes the use of this um, rule to a very to a reduced set of arguments. Um, all right, so so this is pretty much it. This this would be the standard factorial, and when you run this factorial, you would get the result. For for instance, factorial five will get the result 120, and not be offered to continue the search. Right, the uh, cut would trim the search space, right, and say that after you find success, there's definitely nothing else to search for. So this is this has this is the entire lecture on on um, uh, prolog, right? Remember that um, 
what we learned is essentially a new execution model based on, on unification and resolution. We also learned that Prolog is a useful tool for symbolic manipulation. Uh, later, we're going to encode some imperative programs as Prolog terms, and we're going to manipulate those. Uh, we're going to have a toy language, and we're going to write an interpreter for that toy language. Uh, we also have seen an example of program transformation uh, in, in Prolog. Uh, this is a nice, quirky application, um, but um, and it is somewhat related to our module, but definitely program transformations are not the focus of our uh, module. This is it. Uh, thank you for your attention.